Chapter Two: The Thirst for New Experiences. The lowest of servants, the daughter of a false prophet, Kira Alahan, will pick up the dinnerware and give birth to our next Messiah. Whoever sires this child is bound for greatness. These are dying words. Make me proud, my son. These were the last words of Grand Cyrus Ahana Anchalan on her deathbed. In the year nine 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 eight of fifth age, which is seventy one thousand two hundred and two years before present day, two years have passed since the prophecy. Orilla, wake up! Orilla Kieran shook her head in disapproval at her brother for waking her up. Today was her birthday, but. As her birthday coincided with Midsummer at Sitani, this hardly made her unique. In Sitan culture, it was a virtue to only engage in procreation during the Midsummer holiday. As the gestation period for the Sitan species was a year, most people had their birthdays on or around the holiday. Arila looked at her brother Kalo, whose blue skin glittered from excitement. Happy birthday, sister! Kylo Voltrum chirped. Cut it out, Kylo! You only woke me up so that I could wish you a happy birthday as well. Arilla snapped. You only turned two hundred once. How does it feel to reach adulthood? Kylo teased. Arilla paused to think. What did she feel? She felt that the Zetan society wasn't enough to quench her thirst for new experiences. She wanted to experience something different, a community that wasn't inhibited by the strict adherence to ancient laws, a society where you could celebrate birthdays any day of the year. I feel that I would enjoy my birthday more if I didn't share it with half the people in our capital. Arilla exclaimed. "Shush, that's blasphemy. What you're saying is that people should have sex on forbidden days. You know how bad that could end," Kylo replied. Arilla didn't know, at least not from personal experience. The justification for the rule was to avoid overpopulation, as this would drain the zetal crystal and force the zetans to use unclean energy sources. The overpopulation had happened ten thousand years earlier and had led to planet-wide wars and wanton ecological destruction. The planet and the zetans had recovered since then. The myths of that terrible period were crucial for the Zetan civilization. I know what happened at the end of the Fourth Age, but the Grand Cleric's solution is dumb. Why don't we find a way to enjoy sex without causing overpopulation? Arilla asked. What are you talking about? Copulation without the probability of conception is against the natural order. Kalo objected. What about lowering the probability? Would that be outside the natural order? Arilla asked. Uh, I don't know. I'm not as obsessed with sex as you are. At least you'll get to experience sex today, since you have reached adulthood. Kylo teased. Shut up, Kylo. This is not what I want. I want freedom to choose who I am with and when I am with him. Arilla exclaimed and stormed out of the room. <laughs> Arilla was sitting by a waterfall in the wilderness, overlooking the Zetan capital of Grunesia. She felt ambivalent. Today was the first day she was allowed to experience sex after a century of abstinence. The Zetan species had a lifespan of a thousand years, with their fertile period being between one hundred to six hundred years of age. The law stated that only individuals aged between two hundred to five hundred could procreate only during Midsummer Eve. This rule ensured that the population remained constant, so that Sitani could remain a pristine paradise. While there was no penalty for having sex outside the allowed period, conceiving at the wrong age or time of the year was a crime that led to banishment. Arilla's friend Podixa had fallen to the temptation 
a century earlier, and she was now living with her son on Desierto II, which was a barren world fifty years travel away. Would she risk this for the fleeting pleasure of physical contact? When thinking of Podixar, Arila wondered why there were no other beautiful worlds like Sitani in the Milky Way galaxy. The Zetan law stated that only planets that had Zeto crystals could host naturally occurring life, which was the reason for Sitani's uniqueness. Sitani was the only planet with a natural ecosystem in the known universe. Yet, the Cetans had only explored worlds within a 50 light year radius of Sitani. As the diameter of the Milky Way galaxy was 200,000 light years, there was bound to be other planets with rich ecosystems in the galaxy. However, how would she ever reach them in her lifetime? Arilla didn't know the answer to this question, but she did know one thing. She wouldn't lose her virginity tonight. As she was single, the Zetan Genome Masters had matched her with a 398-year-old Zetan man called Sialia. While the Masters claimed they would be compatible, Aurela felt nothing but disdain for the old and uninteresting fellow. I'm not sleeping with him. I'd rather wait another year. Aurela thought and messaged Sialia via a hologram. Xiaoliap, I'm sorry, but I feel ill and I cannot make it to Mansion Island tonight. I hope you have an enjoyable summer solstice. Having sent this message, Arila went home to sleep through an uneventful midsummer. <laughs>